we are in downtown LA with the one and only Donna Missa. <laughs> How are you today? Really good. That's a really good day. And I mean, you're striking. These match your hair. Do they? Yes. Like same palette? In a way, but I, how do you decide which color? Because I know girlies that like love to color their hair, I always do like the same color, but how do you decide? I'm like new to the hair color game. I had the same uh, colored hair my whole life and never did anything to it and it was always the same length and I started my career like that and thought like I just couldn't be someone who changed their look like I thought people would get mad at me and then when we were like mid pandemic I was like I'm doing it and I started with red and the orange is just kind of like in the same family as the red and I don't see myself doing like blue or purple or anything like that I'm more I'm like I'm in a palette yeah and I think I'm gonna just stay here for a while but I'm a little too like low maintenance of a person to keep it up for much longer. So we'll we'll see. Next time you see me, it might it might be just awesome. back to brown. I was talking with your publicist earlier about Revel, and just we were trying to figure out like what's the meaning behind Revel and why why do you call it Revel? So can we can you tell? Us? Of course, Revel is an album about like reaching for light through your darkest like moments and in that reaching like experiencing joy and transcendence and and you know like finding finding yourself in an in a new light at the end of like a really dark time and um so this idea of like reveling in that and and experiencing that even if it's just, you know, for a moment. Um, I think revelry as a word is like a really beautiful way to describe that sense of like intense joy, like euphoric joy that comes with coming out of something really heavy and entering into the um, yeah light that you find from whether it's within or um, you know, you found it through connecting with other people or through nature or whatever it is. But whatever that experience is for you, the the album is about the the revelry that comes from that experience. So I just think it's a really beautiful word too. That's wild. I wanted to ask you about like your favorite track on the album, but I really want to know too is what was the hardest track that maybe was like to make or to write or the, in the mixing process. My my first single from this record, Flicker, was definitely the most like involved from the produ production standpoint. Like we were talking earlier about the live string section and how that came to be, um, and wanting to really inject it with a lot of like just in intensity. I wanted the song to feel really intense, like as from the moment it starts, it just never stops and it builds and builds and builds. And sometimes to do that, you have to go in like layer by layer and. That one was something I started with a writer and a production duo that I love called Dagger. And um, it's just a bunch of women in the room like writing about the experience of, you know, if only for a moment to like revel in, you know, the flickering joy that, you know, you can experience from just letting go of, of you know, whatever it is that feels like it's, it's holding you back. And um, we built the track just really slowly over the last year and um, brought in an executive producer to do additional production. And his name is Billboard. He's an incredible and um, worked with him a lot on this record. So it was like the longest process and the most like laborious um, because I just really wanted to continuously like infuse it with more and more intensity until it became this kind of like explosion of, of sound and energy. So yeah, it, it's definitely a favorite on the record and set a tone for the rest of the record also. Yeah, because I was listening earlier to that song and it's almost like I thought I was in this groove all of a sudden like violin, like real violin just popped out <laughs> and you said it's like, yeah, so what was your decision to like have the violin in there? Initially I wanted to like do a big vocal section but decided that um, like with the producers we just thought like how crazy would it be if just like this 
really organic element mm -hmm. entered into the the world of the song yes. yeah which was all like super electronic and we started building it and and that's when I was you know deciding what I was going to do visually for the song and I knew that I wanted to do this like dance performance for the video and so I thought what a great way to like give myself a place to just like express physically what I'm feeling in in the song and in the in the lyric of the song so I wanted just a section of like just music and strings are one of my favorite instruments to like build tension and then find a moment of release. I think that they're just like inherently so full of tension. So yeah, that's that's how that, that came to be. But we were really inspired by that song by the Veronica's, um, that Untouched song. Do you remember oh that song? It's like, I feel so untouched right now. So that has like that, un, you know, like undeniable string moment that opens the song. Like, duh, 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 duh. And I just like, we were like, where can we put something like that in this song? That is a really memorable like element of that song. Yeah, That's how it starts. Such a cool song and it feels like it really, it's one of the, the you know, dance pop songs that transcends its era. It's like still really cool to listen to and still feels innovative in the way that it was made. And I want to make music like that, even if it's in an electronic space, even if it's not made with organic instruments, I still want a feeling of like classic and like timeless and everything that I make. So yeah, that's, that's where that that inspiration came from. That was really cool. How, did you ever have like, do you remember like Electric Zoo or like the dubstep era? Oh yeah. Were you a rave girl? Not at all, not at all. I'm not a festival girl either. I'm like a bed girl. I'm like, a, I like to like lay down. <laughs> so. <laughs> she said, I'm a, I was like, wait, is that a festival? I was like, no, I think she means her bed. No, I mean my literal bed. No, I'm, I like don't have the energy, but I did, when I was like 15, 16, I was going to like some really strange raves. It was just prior to like dubstep entering mainstream and like the EDC era. Oh, this was like just prior to that. This was when girls were wearing like, um, like animal tails. Yes. And, yeah. And so the, the this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the, the candy and the, bracelets, yes. like, which really inspired this whole like culture. You know, yeah. the EDC culture. Totally. But I was going to raves in Philly like super young. Um, and then by the time dubstep entered like mainstream, I remember a Rihanna song with a dub break in it, and I was like. Yeah when did this happen? But yeah, it was a short-lived period of my life, I think, because I quickly became a bed girl after that period. It was like, that's, that's enough of that, yeah. So also, East Coast girl, yeah. what's good? Let, oh, we got New Jersey, New York, let's go, baby. <laughs> well, tell us about like growing up in Jersey, or just like East Coast swag is so different from West Coast swag. Oh, it's like an entirely it different is. type of person. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and I feel like we, we can notice that in one another. Like, upon meeting people, you're like, are you from the East Coast? But um, growing up in New Jersey was interesting. I was really, really close to New York. And so, like, New York culture had just a huge influence on my upbringing. And from the time I was pretty young, I was taking the train into New York to just, like, hang out. And, yeah, New Jersey is like a... It's got a lot going for it. My parents are still there. But yeah, I think um, I think in general, it makes for some pretty hard-edged people or maybe people that have a bit, a, a sense of like, I don't know, I've, I've grew up really autonomous and feeling like no one told me, you know, what I, what I couldn't do. And I feel like maybe that's an East Coast trait, just feeling like I got this, I can do this and like, I can do it myself. And, I kind of grew up with that mentality kind of baked in. I think it's a New Jersey thing. I was talking to one of my friends earlier and I was like saying that I was going to interview today and she really wanted me to uh, talk to you about um, just like abortion rights and things like that because she noticed that you had put something up about that and I just wanted to know about like you using your platform and also commend you for using your platform um, to talk about these kind of things that are happening in society right now. So what's your take on everything? And um, how do you feel about like where it's headed right now? I mean, it's super scary and, and super sad. And, and women 
our marginalized group. And I feel like we're taken the least seriously when it comes to, you know, being heard because, you know, people, you know, throughout the margins of, you know, like, whether it's LGBTQ or POC, um, it's, it's women that are part of these marginalized groups that are always facing the most adversity. And um, of course, that includes trans women. But when it comes to, you know, abortion rights and the idea that from state to state that there would be a difference from, you know, your rights in your state versus my rights in my state, it just doesn't feel like it really can erase any sense of patriotism or like, you know, a sense of belonging in your country that, that might have existed before something like this happens. And so I think in general, it creates so much divisiveness and um, which is like the last thing that we need. And I just don't think that it should be up for discussion. I don't think it should be up for debate. And it's, it's deeply sad and um, I think in terms of like using platform, I really don't know what other purpose it serves, but to like when there's a moment, a call to action or something that needs to be spoken on, it just seems like a misuse of platform if it's not spoken on. And I've definitely spent the last couple of years stepping away from, you know, being, you know, like a, a straightforward activist on my social media, but it's mostly just because I've stepped away from social media largely in the last couple of years. I spent a lot of years, you know, trying to gain fans and trying to gain following so that I could have my music heard. And I never want to alienate anyone from, you know, listening or finding my music if that's what they're seeking and that's what they need. And at the same time, there's things that you just, if you feel it's right, it's right. And, and uh, it doesn't matter to me at a certain point whether that is upsetting or, or you know, causes someone to not want to listen to what I'm making because of my stance on something as serious as our autonomy and our rights to our own choices about our bodies. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't ever claim to have answers, but I think if we're not asking the questions and like staying really diligent and having conversations amongst each other, at the very least, I would like to provide a sense of community and a sense of safeness and a sense of closeness and that you can talk to me and, and come to my shows even or listen to my records, you know, if we're not, if that's, if that's the way to connect and yeah, it's super, it's super meaningful to me that people who have experienced this or know people who have experienced this or, you know, feel similarly or feel like their, their rights have been taken from them, that they can at the very least know that there's artists that, that care about that and are, are going to be in their corner and can say, like, I see you. So I guess I just care about, you know, saying I, I, I see you. Also, on a bright note, she's gonna play Bowery Ballroom and the Roxy. Let's go. Are you excited for tour? What's the live like performance gonna look like? Cause is, is it gonna be with the band or is it gonna be just you and like a mic? It's like gonna what's be gonna happen? Band. I like need to play with the band. I like love to have a drummer. It just changes the energy. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna have um, a guitarist to play some keys and I'm getting a, some cool lighting design and. I'm just excited to design a show again. I've been opening for a really long time and it's, it's been a while since I've done my own headline shows. So I think what I'm most excited for is like creating a space where like you can experience what I hope you experience when you listen to the record, which is like just freedom to be like super expressive in your happiness and, and, and like just a total letting go and like I want people to dance and I want people to feel connected with one another and I think it's something that we are like crying for and like people need spaces to get together again and to just be joyful and to just like dance to music and 
scream lyrics and feel like a connectedness to one another. So I'm most, I'm most looking forward to that, to like making that space possible and like being a part of that. I think it's gonna be really fun. I peep like one of this video that like you, there was just like so much movement and like there was like dance involved too. I think that's really cool too that you like incorporate these kind of like these visuals and they're so like connected to the audio, you know? You know, always. Do you enjoy that aspect? Like, of course. Music? Yeah, of course. I mean, when I started making music, I, I kind of just wanted to like write songs and sing songs and through developing and, and growing and evolving, I've really come to like love the process of developing a, a visual world to, to accompany the music and to like create something that you can really like immerse yourself into. And I think we're, we're all so visual now and the way we experience things is so visual and it feels so inherent now to the music. So yeah, I, dance is such a huge part of this record because I wanted to make dance songs. I wanted to make songs that you would just had to dance to when you listen to it. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'll be doing some dancing. I'll be doing a little. Hey, hey, hey. What are you gonna wear on, on the tour? Like anything cool? Like, cause I feel like your style is so like cool and like edgy. Thanks. What are you planning? Do you have any cool outfits that you're planning? I have a really cool designer making me something really cool. She's, um, she's awesome. She's out in Chicago. Her name is Madeline and she's making me a cool handmade thing that's like one of a kind and I love supporting small, smaller artists and things that are maybe more in the fringes or a little bit more niche. So I'm really excited to wear it. Um, yeah, I think it'll be awesome. Okay, so we are going to do something called Magic Box. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna shake it up. Okay. And uh, basically we're just gonna go with three questions and they're kind of silly, but you know. They're in the box. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta pick them out and uh, we'll start with the first one. I'm like a little nervous. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Um, <laughs> what's the best way to break up with someone? Oh man, I didn't write that one. I did not write that one. Um, okay. <laughs> well, I feel like these are meant to be like fun, silly questions with fun, silly answers, but this one feels really, for, for like really for real. That one feel a little real. Let me stop. Which is fine. I'll, I but I ha like I I'm I can't give you like a silly answer to this one. Is that still in line That's with okay. the game? Yeah. That's okay. Because yeah. I think you have to be. I think it has to be in person. Wow. And I think you have to explain yourself. Mm. And the worst thing that you can do to someone is leave them with a bunch of like baggage. Just like don't leave people with baggage. Like have the kindness, you know, even if they wronged you, it'll make you feel better. You don't want to walk around with that. Mm -hmm. So I would say you have to talk to them, explain yourself. Don't ghost people. It's super weird. Yes. That's my answer. Shout, yeah, okay. Wow, this got real deep. I'm, I'm like thinking that we we're talking I about. I feel kind of deep. Okay, here we go. Oh. I'm gonna try for it. I'm, I'm try, hope for some levity here. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nicki Minaj or Cardi B? Like, like you can't pick. And I, like, why are we? <laughs> That's a we is this a you thing? That's a me question. I mean, it's a good question but I don't think that anyone should be choosing one or the other. Wow, they're I respect that. They're both so that. important and they're both so that. different. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a Barb for sure, but you can't deny Cardi B. Wow. That's how I feel. I love that, I love that answer, okay. <laughs> okay, one more, give us one more. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm kinda scared now. <laughs> I know, okay. Did you ever have Bieber fever? Oh, she got the Bieber <laughs> fever one. No, genuinely no. Um, no, I did not. I have more Bieber fever now than I, than I did when he came out. Because um, his music is good. Right. That's how I feel. Like, Bieber can bop. He, Bieber could get it. Bieber's got bops. What? That's it. <laughs> All right. Yay, well thank you so much. Yay. Such a cool you, thank you so much. Thank you.